Welcome to Admin Setup for Transaction Types. This is a pretty large section, so it's going to be split up into a couple of different videos. This video is going to cover basically the first half of the transaction type screen. But first what I want to do is show you exactly what we'll be setting up. So within a client's file, we'll go ahead and search for a client. So this is what we're going to do is set up how to create these transactions for within the client's file. So we'll scroll down to the transaction information section. And what we'll be focusing in on is how to create and set up these transaction types, which are going to show in your dropdown and explain which different fields will open up based on the setup process. So this is what we'll be focusing on. So you want to go to the admin tab and scroll down to transaction types. So like I said, since this is such a large section, we will have it broken down into a couple of different videos. There's one specific video just focusing on these predefined notes. This particular video is going to cover basically the first half of these columns. So we're going to go from the customized transaction type to the default payment method is what will be covered in this particular video. So you can filter your transaction types based on your business type. We're going to focus in on tax preparation. Because within our tax preparation setup, you can see we, we have fees set up, we have payments set up, discount set up, and adjustments. So this touches on, a, on pretty much a little bit of everything. So the customized transaction type here, what, whatever you type in here, this is what's actually going to show in that drop down within the client's file. You can see we've got a couple of spacers here that we've put in here just, just to divide it a little bit so it makes it just a little bit easier to sort through your transactions when um, when you're logging those. So this is, like I said, this is just an example of what we have set up. You don't have to set yours up exactly this way, but this is just a, a good template to start with. So we'll, we'll edit the amendment one just to open up all these different fields to show you what your options are. So this is what shows in the drop down. You can choose uh, the, the category here is for adjustment, credit, debit, discount, fee, or payment. So the adjustment one is going to be used to record something other than a fee or a payment. Maybe you're balancing out an account or adding fees to somebody else's account, something like that. So you're not, not actually logging a fee or a payment, but you're just adjusting the account. Credit and debit are strictly tied to the bookkeeping feature, and there's actually a separate video that discusses the bookkeeping. So I'm going to skip over the debit and credit part for now. The discount is for logging and keeping track of the discounts that you are giving. I'll go ahead and save this down here so you can see. So down here we've listed, we have several different discounts that we give in our office, so we've labeled those as the category as discount. Then the category fee is to record all of your fees. And then the last category is payment to record all of your payments. The inactive column, once you've created a transaction type and you've used it, you are no longer able to delete it. So you'd want to just go ahead as market is inactive and then it will no longer show in your drop down of your transaction types. Ordinal, that's going to be the order order in which you will see these transactions in the dropdown. Again, I recommend leaving some spaces in between your numbers so it's easy to insert a transaction later if you would like to without having to renumber all of them. So I definitely recommend leaving at least five, if not ten numbers in between so it's much easier to make adjustments later. The date column, <clears throat> this column would be if you want the date field to be open when you log a transaction. You probably only want to do that if you're doing something like bookkeeping or something where you're not logging transactions in real time. You're logging something maybe from the past. 
Um, generally, if you're doing tax preparation or something like that and you log your fees as they happen, then you don't need to check this box and the date will just default to the current date when you're actually entering that transaction. Mark is done. When logging a transaction, you can have it marked as done as the default, which is probably the most common. But there may be some instances, maybe within bookkeeping, that you want the transaction there, but you don't necessarily want it marked done right away. So in that case, do not check this box, and it will, once you log the transaction, it will show there, but it won't be marked as done until you physically go in and mark it. Fee, if you want the fee field to open up, so you can actually log in the fee. So these are all fees, so we've put the fee, fee, fee field to be open for each one of those. Default fee, if you have a normal fee that you generally charge for that transaction, for example, we have a default fee in here for an amendment of $70. So that means when we're in the client's file, we're logging the transaction for an amendment, it's automatically going to populate and put in that fee of $70 for us. You can always override it at that time, but it just saves time if you're generally charging the same fee for a particular service or transaction. A payment, if you want the payment field to open up, you would check this box. So you can see down here under our payments, we've checked that box, so that field will open up. Same thing with discount. The discount field here, we have discounts here, that discount field will open. The default discount here is just like the default fee that we talked about here. We have a default discount. So if you're setting up a transaction that's a discount, say we always give a $20 discount for this particular item here, we put it in there, it logs that discount for us, just save some time. And the payment method, so these are our payment transactions that we have set up. We've checked this box for payment method. Um, so if you're creating a payment transaction, you'll want to select this. And then actually in the next column, you will choose the default payment method to go with that transaction type. And you actually set these up on the admin page uh, payment method. So whatever you set up here for payment methods are going to be your choices right here under the default payment method. So that's all for the first half of the admin section for transaction types. Thank you.